I'd like to call this special, uh, this regular uh, meeting of the Board of Selectmen to order on February 8th. It's 702. Um, uh, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Uh, first item on the agenda is um, public comment. Do we have anybody that would like to speak? Chris? Please state your name and your address. Hi, uh, Chris Taylor, 93 West Avenue. Um, I just uh, don't want to belabor the point. I know that the emails have gone out. I'm, uh, you know, uh, commissioner <coughs> on the commission for Parks and Recreation. I know that we will be discussing, or you will be discussing through the budget process, um, the $50,000 for Pear Tree Point. Um, as a member of the Pear Tree Point Working Group, I just wanted to urge um, the motion to uh, accept those funds. Um, we went through and had a survey of over 2,500 uh, town residents, and the view of most residents was very clear that uh, the uh, building facility as is needs to be kept up and updated. Um, the 50,000 would go to helping not only the outside but the inside, and uh, I, we believe that those funds would be greatly needed, and uh, I think it was great to get that feedback from the community. So. Thank you all very much and uh, urge you to vote in favor. Thank you, Chris. Any other comments from our public that's here? Okay, do we have anybody? No. Nope. Okay. Um, <clears throat> next order of business is to discuss and take action on a request for a special appropriation of $142,714 for a heart and hypertension claim settlement. And We'll go over this. Um, so, heart and hypertension law um, says police officers and firefighters, which we don't have to worry about because of our volunteers, but police officers hired before a certain date who are diagnosed with heart conditions or hypertension, it is automatically presumed that it's a result of their work. Um, and so, it does happen where an officer will at some point file claim <coughs> that they've had um, some kind of heart condition or hypertension. And um, sometimes we're just paying medical bills or other times there is a settlement if a doctor has determined that there is a certain level of impairment. So that was the situation with one of our officers. And um, it took quite a while to arrive at the settlement because we had independent medical exams and such where we finally agreed upon a rating. Um, you know, often what happens is it, um, the settlement is done before they retire or anything, and so we're paying them out on a weekly basis or a biweekly basis, you know, during that period. But this officer was about to retire, so, and the claim dates back to 2019 as a start date. So, unfortunately, we have to pay the full amount in a lump sum. So, what we're asking you to approve is the funding the special appropriation which will go to the Board of Finance and then the RTM. Do we have any more of these in the works? Um, so right now I believe there are only three officers remaining who were on the force before that date where it's just an automatic presumption. Right. Um, anybody hired after that date if they make a claim it's treated more like a workers comp claim where they would have to prove that it was caused um, by their by, by their work um, and we did recently agree to hire Karma to serve as our third party administrator um, with these claims because um, they can be very complicated um, so we moved to do that with them okay. any other questions for Kate on this? we've done this in the future in the past paid these kind of settlements yeah. yes okay yes and, you know, like I said, some of them, we own them um, for quite a while because if they have ongoing medical, um, you know, procedures, medications, they, um, we have to pay those, um, even post-retirement. Is there something in place that would <coughs> provide 
or periodic testing or medical assessments to determine whether something like this is happening and for lack of a better phrase nip it in the bud if you will and either provide uh, to get the, the person affected into less strenuous work or something like that so that this doesn't fester and turn into well a I don't think you'd be able to too. you wouldn't be able to force them into retirement unless they well, were not, medically enable to be an well, no, officer. no another role within the police department. it doesn't matter what role they're in they could be have been assigned to a desk job for 20 years and it they would have you know if they were hired before that date they would have been presumed to have the, the um, but to your question um, one of the items in the police budget was a ten thousand dollar wellness line yeah. and if you recall the police talking about you know part of it is to encourage <coughs> more physical fitness but another part of it is to do some testing um, calcium cardiac testing um, to try and catch things earlier um, and for you know these are officers who would not have that automatic presumption but to identify problems and get them treated um, at an earlier date. Okay. Do you recall when the higher date was when we changed? It was not us, it was the state. Um, I, I want to say 96, okay. um, but I do know our HR director had said there are only three officers remaining that qualify. Okay. And none have um, exhibited any symptoms or anything else? None have indicated that they've been diagnosed. Um, and they've, you know, but that doesn't mean, you know, until the point, um, they could still, you know, right. it's not. Um, Got it. Okay. Any other questions for Kate? Yeah, I'm sorry for this yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, may I have a motion to approve a special appropriation for $142,714 for a heart and hypertension claim settlement? Marcy moves. Mike seconds. All in favor? Unanimous, Kate. Thank you. Okay, next item on the agenda is to discuss and take action on the recommendation of the budget for fiscal year 23-24. So... What one what do you this have? This is the cart. This okay, was that was um yeah, what's the same Remember, part? I made a comment about what the data ran. Um, yeah, yeah, great. Uh, Nature Center said they did a test study for three months this summer, right. two to three times a week. Uh, three high school seniors working with Molly Robinson, the program director, and the deoxygenated nation. It's usually should be ten to okay. sixteen percent, and it's down to five. So okay. Like Thanks, Thank you. Appreciate it. <clears throat> okay. You good, Jen? Uh, just waiting for a remote to get the <clears throat> screens on because this one is not working. Okay. 
Can we add that to the budget? Those, the solar powered ones? Um, I think they died. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. okay. Uh, how do you want to do this? Um, do you want to go over the list? Yeah. To open items? <coughs> Okay, so the open items that we have are um, the dispatcher chairs. I thought we voted on that, though. I had only that, um, the only thing that you had actually all agreed upon was the personnel issues. Okay. Okay, so I'll go through them really quick. So we have the dispatcher chairs, we have the cherry lawn pond aerator, uh, the second parking ranger, the, um, the CAD uh, for the police and capital, the street sweeper in Capitol, the Kids in Crisis grant, the Pear Tree Bathhouse, the Museum of Darien grant. And I think, Kate, the only other thing that I didn't see on here was um, if you had any extra information on the um, um, premium, medical premium. Um, nothing new. We haven't had a chance to go through the analysis um, yet. To, um, you know, we just got it yesterday. So there is the potential. <coughs> To reduce it further um, than the thirty thousand we talked about yesterday, um, but I'm just not comfortable saying, sure. "Yeah, let's go all the way down" without having to get a chance to right. look fully through the proposal from the second carrier. Okay, so Jen, what do you have there included? Is the thirty included there? No, no. Okay, all right. Um, so. Maybe, maybe go back up and go to where we are currently with the changes that we made yesterday. So where you are right now in your Board of Selectmen budget is a 4.28% increase. Um, when you include the library and net out taxes, taxes to be raised for operations is actually a decrease of 0.62%. And then on capital, it, total capital is a Increase of 21.86% and taxes needed for capital, which is misleading because so much is done by the Board of Finance on how to finance that, is up 552%. Okay. But Board of Finance will make decisions on bonding and use of um, fund balance right. to fund capital. Okay. So that's why we want to focus on that one. Okay. And that was. Kate, do you remember where we started on, where did you start on capital? It, ignoring Hanson and um, Weed, the big projects, you remember? The total were? was seven million, what the percentage was. I don't know that I ever actually calculated. Well, that was the department request. What you had yeah. in your town right. administrator proposed budget was four million one fifty six. Right, I'm asking what was in the department request. But that yeah, included- was over seven million. That included- Two and a half. Two right? and a half million that I said should come out and be addressed independently of the budget. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Does anyone have any questions so far on kind of where we are? No? All right. So let's go through these items. Um, the dispatch chairs, um, that is, I think, a, like a $12,000 item, right? So 10495 Okay. All right. I support um, that. Book. It's coming from. <laughs> Excuse me, it's the president. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually my son. Close Sorry. Too. Uh, can I call you later? Sorry about that. Um, okay, the dispatcher chairs. Um, I think that uh, Sarah and I were um, in support of this. Mm -hmm. um, any discussion? Good. Okay, that's in. <clears throat> All right, the Cherry Lawn um, Pond Aerator. We received a lot of information. I think um, I appreciate the um, all of the emails from everybody. It shows um, shows that you're paying attention, which is terrific. And um, I also really appreciated the uh, message from um, the Nature Center and the uh, pictures that Patty brought in. I personally wanted to. Um, just take a, a, another look at this because uh, it was kind of a new concept. So I talked to Pam. It is a, a you know a two year two year old um, kind of idea, so it is relatively new. But um, I'm comfortable with what I read as far as um, 
you know, warranty, a number of hours, um, being able to handle the size of the pond. Um, it's pretty cold here. How does that work out? So I'm not a pond aerator expert by any means, although I do know a little more now than before. So I personally am in support of this. Um, any discussion? Any thoughts? I supported it yesterday and feel comfortable about it today as well. <coughs> Agreed. Yep. John? Yeah, I mean, you just look aesthetically at how the pond looks. If people are going to be spending time around there, we really ought to have an investment like this that cleans that up. And, and if it doesn't work 100%, we ought to be prepared to do something more. So anyway, yeah, I'm supportive. Okay. Um, and you know what? And I think also all the work that was done there already, um, this kind of, um, I think, finishes off that area. So I think it's a, I think it's a good idea. Okay. We're in agreement. That's in. Second parking ranger. Um, I'm going to let Kate explain this a little bit more. Um, the second parking ranger, first, most importantly, the parking fund is self-supporting, so any change you make here does not impact the taxes. Um, and with the um, parking returning to more normal levels, um, we need the second ranger to assist with the ticketing, the enforcement, um, but also maintenance around the station. So they don't just ticket at the parking um, stations and at the, the merchant lots downtown. They also do winter snow removal, ice removal from the platforms. They also do landscaping and they do maintenance of the um, buildings like cleaning the bathrooms um, and cleaning the insides of the buildings. So <clears throat> with only one, it's a challenge um, to get it all done. So we would like to have that second um, ranger back. Um, and I did not, um, I, was, I was not willing to until I, I could see proof that the fund could support it. And it can. So they do the maintenance at the train stations? <coughs> yeah. Clean the bathrooms. Clean the bathrooms, keep the, the platform clear of um, snow and ice, I mean, you know, the parking lots, <coughs> and they do, um, they do some of the landscaping at the, the stations. So we have, the office has received um, some complaints about um, the state of the, the station inside. Um, you know, it's not always as clean as it could be. And if you remember, we extended the hours for the station. So um, I'm in support of this. Yep, same. Sarah, Mike. I guess my question is, and I do support it. Now I'm using the train, so I can appreciate that <laughs> a little bit more. You say it's a closed system. Mm -hmm. So is there, ugh, is there an expectation that this person would be writing enough tickets to yes. fund their position? Mm -hmm. Yes. If we, um, when we look at the history, mm -hmm. it's not just the tickets, it's, it's also the daily parking. And part of the enforcement is <clears throat> uh, not just ticketing, but also getting the people to who have not been paying to pay. But yes, um, in normal years, we um, we ticket over over a hundred thousand dollars. Well, I won't make a federal case out of it, but um, my position about this hire is uh, unchanged. But I see the. Uh, I see the numbers, so. But I'm not, I'm not in favor of this uh, ad. Okay. All right, Marcy. Uh, if it's self-funding, then I'm in favor of it. If it's something that we have to pull out of our, our budget, uh, I, I can't see the purpose of it at this point, but if, it, if you can say it is. it's self-funding, then I, I support it. Kate, what happens if for whatever reason, our numbers don't return to normal, and we don't have the kind of volume of revenue coming in. How does that position get? Um, we would lay them off. We did that before. And does it need to be a full time? Could it be a half time you know, or part time? Um, I don't know that we'd be able to do it on a part time basis. Okay. Um, we have not explored that option. Okay. Um, I do think we need it full time. Okay. 
Okay. So, I believe, Mike, you are not in favor of this. Sarah, you're still in favor? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, we'll leave the parking ranger in. Okay. Um, all right. You know what? We have a lot of, well, we have a few um, park people, park and rec people. So let's go to the uh, bathhouse, the pear tree bathhouse. Um, we received some information, which I think, I know, Patty, you saw, and Chris, you probably saw also, about um, what's desired over there. And, uh, um, you know, I think, um, I think it's clear that something needs to be done there. It's a, it's a beautiful beach, and uh, there's been a lot of community interest in sprucing things up over there. Um, I think, you know, I'm, I'm, I did talk with Pam today, and I, um, she, you know, she did point out that sinks, faucets, mirrors, um, that kind of thing were installed last year. So I'm, I'm hopeful that the 50,000 will be used wisely and, um, if we don't need to replace things that we just purchased, that would be that would be good. But I guess that's where I stand. Is I, I see the value in this. Um, anyone comments, Sarah? I think this is this refresh has been something that um, the folks have been using that beach for a long have wanted for a long time, and it has been. I think it was the impetus for doing some of the work years ago, and we know that that may not have been able to go forward in that shape or size that it was originally proposed, but I do think that this work still needs to get done. And I think the people who use that facility would really appreciate right. having an updated, and it's, it doesn't reflect how we see or use some of the other facilities in our town. It's certainly not the same, and um, let's bring it up to speed. Right, I think that having the person that worked at WEED work on this would be, mm -hmm. would be great. Mike, you have any thoughts? Uh, I'm in favor. Okay. Uh, I think uh, um, the materials are uh, pretty self-explanatory, and it's been a long time in coming, so I think it's time to commit to this. <coughs> and the other thing is it's not controversial, right? So um, we're at a point now where <coughs> making an investment like this, uh, that there's broad consensus that this is what everybody wants, it's just much easier than, than some of the other stuff they'd considered before, so absolutely. Okay. Yeah. I think loud and clear, um, the survey that was sent out by the Park Direct Department really is saying that this is a priority for our constituents, and I'm willing to support that. Right. Okay. The fifty thousand pear tree bathhouse improvement is um, is on. Okay. Thank you. And you're welcome. And you are more than welcome to stay, mm -hmm. um, but if you want to. I got a vote on the whole budget, so watch yeah. it. Jet <laughs> out. You can hit the right. Thank you. Quick question: Is there a plan laying out how they're spending the fifty thousand? Yes, it was very just, specific. Yeah, we just got it this afternoon. Yes, because we haven't had that chair. Well, you know what? The the Jenny plan. Schwartz has it. The, the, the okay. I'm not sure yet. Okay, Jack. Again, it's really just hard for people that are watching the meeting if you're over there talking but to answer your question there was a, um, a you know kind of a back of an envelope of what would be done there the the numbers um, you know I think um, need a little work um, but I'm confident that the that that the park and rec department will um, will do a good job and um, I'm happy to send out what we have here but as a finance person, you'll see that the numbers don't quite um, kind of yeah, add just, up. Just so you, you hear me. Sure. <clears throat> I agree that it needs to be done. Jack, just identify yourself. Oh, uh, Jack Davis, uh, 197 Hoyt Street, Chair of F&B Committee in the RTM. I agree it needs to be done. I'm just, from a financial perspective, like to see that it's laid out with plans so that we are not surprised with what's going on. That's my only comment. 
<clears throat> okay. But I think we're, we're finished on, on the bathhouse. Okay, next let's, um, let's go over the Kids in Crisis grant. Um, we were um, increasing that, right, Kate? Yes. Okay. I okay. got that. I think they've been doing quite a bit in the past year right. for the town and the schools. Right. And they've been increasing their, their help for us. So. Yes. Mike, any thoughts? I'm in support of that. Okay. No strong thoughts either way. That's okay. fine. Yeah, I've been working with them a lot on the mental health task force, and they are incredibly active and engaged in yes. this town. I think that this is something that they could definitely use and support. Yeah. yeah. And they actually gave numbers of how many people they've helped. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that, that was a strong thing for me. Okay. Um, the mini museum, um, so Kate, that's a, Jen, that's a yes. Okay, Museum of Darien Grant. That was, um, Kate, what was that? That was... Uh, they 20, asked for 000. 20. I had put them back to 10, which is what they had been funded for for the last several years. Okay. Um, I think, you know, I gave this a little bit of thought, and, um, you know, Museum of Darien is, they are doing a service for our town, similar to, you know, the library. Um, and I think we fund about 80% of the library right now. So what do we, what, what do we fund for other groups? Um, the depot, we fund about 11% of their budget. Um, Kids in Crisis, <laughs> it's not even 0.01. Um, it's so small. Their budget is like 9 million, so 5,000 uh, is nothing. Um, if we do the full 20% that the museum requested, that would be 10% of their total budget. Any thoughts? Yes. Um, it's a phenomenal facility. We're very lucky in this town to have it. I do think it helps our residents. My concern is that when folks pay taxes, they're not necessarily doing it, um, understanding that their their money is now going to area nonprofits. Um, having worked in the nonprofit world, it is very near and dear to my heart. It is not an attempt to not want to fund them, but I just think we need to be very careful. Um, the Museum of Darien is phenomenal. Most of our kids have gone through that. Uh, I can't remember the <coughs> third grade trip or whatever it is, they're, they're great. Um, what they've done, particularly over the um, centennial, like everything that they've done is phenomenal. But I caution on giving an operating grant of 20,000 going forward. Um, I do. <laughs> yeah, that's a reasonable <coughs> viewpoint. I think they've been pretty careful in trying to say, look, this really is to support the archives that they maintain for research that, they, that people need to do yep. for properties in Darien <coughs> as opposed to their other activities like the parades and kind of all that stuff. And so uh, that's that's kind of where I draw the line. I wouldn't want to just support a nonprofit um, with a general operating grant. I think we go down that path at our peril. Uh, you're right about that. But these guys have a specific asset that they uh, maintain on behalf of the town, and that's the only place they can go to get these old records. So I think in that regard, I, I actually agree with you. But I think in this regard, they've presented that case well, and, and it makes sense. So. Okay. Yeah, we've had, we've, we've had people use this facility for just that, to, to research um, documents. So I, I, I see the value of that. Um, you know, I, I was uh, persuaded by uh, what John said uh, last night. Uh, the only caveat I would add, uh, I would put in that, is that uh, that budget could, or that grant could certainly be subject to a, you know, cut uh, next year. I know we talked about the idea being that it would be going from 10 to 20 and would remain at, at 20, but I just would put it on notice that that might not necessarily be the case. It's a year to year consideration. They would, they would have to justify it every year, no doubt. I agree right. with that. Yeah. And you know, we could have like we could have a situation where um, I, I'm a very, very appreciative of the Chamber of Commerce, right? That came back and said, "Thank you so much for the grant last year. We are, we are not applying for one this year." So, mm -hmm. um, but I, I I see the creep problem. I absolutely. Marcy, any thoughts? Yeah. No, I I've also been persuaded by John. Um, talking about the 
the archives, I, I think that's an important asset in our town and that needs to be preserved. And uh, I'm willing to take on that, that expense. Okay. All right. So we're in agreement? Yep. Okay, Jen. So that stays. No, that goes, that goes up. Oh, that goes no, up. That sorry. Goes to 20. <coughs> Um, next is w next we'll go over the um, the computer aided dispatch. That was the um, the police budget item for two hundred twenty six, right, Kate? Yes. Right. And um, I spoke with the chief yesterday, and Kate spoke with the chief again today on this item. And um, Kate, you want to take it away? <laughs> um. So what, what's going on is we have computer aided dispatch now, and it needs to be upgraded, and we've had great difficulty with the current firm in getting the upgrades that we need. Um, they were not doing field work during COVID. They've been sold two times. Um, trying to identify representatives has been difficult. But the chief police, it, it's possible that it could still be done, that we might be able to get them to um, do it, whether it would be hold at the prices that we had previously agreed to pre-COVID, we don't know that for sure. Um, and one of the things he said to me today was he doesn't want to throw good money after bad. Um, the software that he would be proposing switching to is one that's used by many more towns in Connecticut. Um, lower support costs on an annual basis no additional charges if the state comes out with new forms that we have to file um, where the existing software company has always charged us for any new forms um, and would get us up to date with things like e-citations which we are not capable of doing now but the state wants us to do it and we're one of the few towns still out there so we may be able to get the existing software provider to finally upgrade our system at a lower cost than the 226,000 that um, the chief is asking for the new software. Um, we don't know what that number is. There is currently in the budget about, um, I think it's 54,000 in two different accounts related to, um, <coughs> related to that, um, that software. Um, when you say 54,000 in two accounts, do you mean a balance or a balance, budget? Yes, okay. a balance. Um, so it was budgeted by... Budgeted, the upgrades were budgeted for. Right, we just haven't been but able we to have get them to respond. Right. Um, which would, you know, theoretically, if you approve the new software, I would expect the Board of Finance to wipe those balances out. Um, so it's, you know, it's a bit of a difficult decision. Do we take the chance on sticking with the old stuff? Um, and hope that we can get this software company to do the upgrades we need and get that going, or do we spend more and switch over to the um, to a new software system? Um, you know, the chief will work with whatever you you decide. And so the, the and the other thing is the maintenance is fifty thousand currently that we're paying. The maintenance on the new software would be twenty one thousand dollars less per year. So effectively, if it's 226 for the new, and there's 56 sitting in accounts, it's a, it's a lower net cost. Yes. So it's a $30,000 yes. reduction. In yes. Mm -hmm. But you've, you've also got to assume that, you know, upgrading the old software would still be a lesser cost than the new, you know, the net on the other. But, uh, oh, I mean, overall, the, the feeling is that this this product is going south, if you will, with no appreciable reason to believe that it's going to turn around and get better for us. The chief can manage it if it doesn't get better, but there's no reasonable basis to believe that they're going to wake up and all of a sudden give us the kind of service that we expect. Is that You fair? know, I, I think that's probably a fair statement that, you know, even if we were to get the upgrades that we want, what's our confidence level that on an ongoing basis that this is going to be, you know, working well for us. Yeah, I think the yeah. chief has a 
um, a, and already in a relationship with the company that they're looking at, and it's used by the majority of other um, Fairfield County police. So there's that. Then there's the zero relationship with this company, which is frustrating. So some of these answers the chief can't even get because there's, you know, so it, it could be that the upgrade is, is very reasonably priced. Right. Um, but we don't know because, you know, people aren't answering, so. One option you do have <coughs> is to um, leave it in and let continue to try and get to a resolution with the old software company and if we are able to, the Board of Finance can cut. Is the current software a safety liability? Is it? Not a safety liability, no. It's more of a um, things that we cannot do electronically that we should be like the tickets, that we okay. still handwrite tickets where this, um, the state doesn't, they want, the state wants everybody doing electronic tickets and we can't do that with the system we have now. And, it's a, and that writing out those tickets is actually pretty onerous for our department also. So. Can, you, can we reduce the amount of the calls for the new system by the amount that's in the balance of the accounts or no? Um, I think you could, yes. I, you know, I think the Board of Finance would be doing that anyway, but um, I can't pull them up. I don't seem to have access to Munis on my laptop. <coughs> I don't either. Okay. Um, so I don't know the exact amount. Okay. Just curious. I mean, if you gave me five minutes, I can go down to my office and get it. But, you know, it's... Might make it more palatable. Well, you know, while you go move on to talking about another item, I'll run down to the office and... Um, but, Kate, you're going to look to see if we can take the money out of those accounts. I'm going to look for the amounts. Okay. okay. Because you basically, uh, I'm supposing, like, if we take those balances, you kind of force the Board of Finance hand that, you know, they're going to have to close those out or we somehow um, transfer those balances into the account for the new software. I think if we need to be focusing on a software system, it probably should be the newer one, mm -hmm. not the older one. Um, I think it makes sense for them to, to have the, the new one. Yep. Okay. Well, why don't you go, why don't you talk about the sweeper and I will go get you the numbers. Okay. So the sweeper is, uh, the it's a 2000 and we currently have a 2008 sweeper and the um, replacement cost is three hundred eighty thousand um, dollars this was you know we discussed this a little bit I think yesterday and it's an item that um, has had did have some work on it um, I don't know it was last year or the year before that was um, um, you know, rather expensive. Uh, Fifteen, I think it was fifteen, twenty thousand, Jen. Mm -hmm. It was somewhere in there. I, I, you know, I, I talked to our director of public works again today, to um, just to make sure, and that is a um, a relatively expensive um, um, repair. Uh, and the sweeper is, um, it's mature. That's 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 how we're terming this. It's mature, um, but it's it's fine. So Ed's um, 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 director Gentile, um, Mr. Gentile is um, is okay with us on deferring this for a year, with the understanding that you know um, it is a 15-year-old piece of equipment that um, you it know should go in next year's budget. It, it, it will it will come back again yeah. before us, um, but he <coughs> feels we can we can get another year out of it. So my recommendation is that we defer this. At this time, I'm good with that. Fine. Good. Yep. Yep. Um, I'm fine with that. I mean, do we have an idea in our head, like what the burdens and possibilities are for items next year? I mean, we can put it off to next year, but right. you know, if all right. of a sudden next year is horrible, that we have a better ability to to do it now, even with what. Uh, Mr. Gentile is saying, I, I just want to be comfortable that we're not, you know, overburdened right. what might be going on next year. Right. So what's on our six-year capital plan for next year? 
which hasn't had nearly the level of review that the, the, the budget year has. Totals $9.4 million. What is this year's, Jim? Uh, we are currently at about $4.1 million with what's before you. It's a big jump. Yeah. And that's before we look at debt service. Um, there's probably some items in there that would get pulled out for bonding um, because mm -hmm. it is the big picture of all the capital that we have. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm not saying not to do it this year. I just wanted to make sure that we gave that, you know, just a moment's, uh, you know, oh, That's a good point. Um, Jen, are any of those items, are they, um, is it fire apparatus? For next year? Yeah. There's at least one. Yes, there's 815,000 of that is a tanker. Okay. Quickly look at the other. And I do remember in this report, the safety report, that there were two additional coming up fire apparatus that they were recommending we replace. So that's a good point, Mike. So Mike's point, Kate, was you know um, pushing to <coughs> next year when we might have. It, Kate's saying we have about nine million already lined up for next year. So just one other large item that's in there. Um, is a $3 million placeholder for a new parking lot and boat ramp at Pear Tree. And that's what I think the bid package is supposed to be firming up and something mm -hmm. of that level would, would meet Kate's requirement to pull it out and you know, take it out of the annual budget. Right. So that so brings like 5 25 down to right. closer to $5, million 5 million if we take out the apparatus and that. Okay. John, you have any thoughts? Um, We've got a big capital budget <coughs> next year, uh, <coughs> but I don't think that's a reason to say we need to spend the money this year, right? We ought to spend the money when we need to spend the money. If they can get another year out of that particular apparatus, I'm okay with that, with deferring it until next year, irrespective of how much money we've got set aside for or planned to spend for capital budgets for next year. So given where we are with this budget, I'm okay with this uh, being deferred. And our capital this year, Kate, or Jen, is up how much? If we didn't pull this? About $700,000. 22%? Yeah, 20, 23%. <coughs> okay. Marcy, any thoughts? I think if we can get another year out of it, we should get another year out of it. Um, I, I definitely see your point. I think, you're, I think that was a good... That was a good uh, question, but um, current state, the economy, I think it's smart to but just wait. Yep. Just wait. So. Okay. Yeah, I'm I torn. Just, I mean, I, I'm fine doing it. I just wanted to make yeah, sure we no. had the discussion about impact and took a little bit of a forward-looking look for next year. So I, that's, I, I can support deferring. That's, that's fine. As long as they're able to use it, yeah, successfully. Okay. I have two questions on this. Uh, Jack Davis, one ninety-seven Hoyt Street. I'm going to keep the same address. <laughs> um, is the repairs to this um, sweeper going to be done this year, and it is? the current oh. year's budget? If not... There are no repairs required right now. We all right. But if we... Okay. So I, I'm just curious whether or not we had to add back no, no, 15000 no. to next year's budget for... No, repairs. it's up and running. We're, okay. we're, just, we're just anticipating the that worst and trying okay. to quantify my, that. And my, the 15 to 20 is... Um, estimate. That, that's a pretty good yeah. problem. Yeah. Um, my second thing is... I think that the percentage of your capital is high 
because if we move the grant money that used to be in capital over to revenue, if we added back in, would that change the number of the No, that's just no, looking straight at the expenditures. Okay, just wanted to understand that, thanks. Okay, so Jen, we're going to defer that. Okay, so Kate, where do we end up on the accounts? There is $55,022 currently set aside for the um, upgrade, two pieces of the upgrade to the existing software. So could we move that from accounts? So you don't have that ability, but if basically you you could force it, um, or at least force request. the Board of Finance to have that discussion by cutting the current request of 226 and change by 55,000. I would support that. I'd support that. So. Yeah, that's fine. Um, okay. <clears throat> okay, do we miss anything, Jen? Kate? Um, Re the reduce accrued leave, is that a discussion item that we're? Yeah, Kate brought that up. I brought it up. Night. I'm having second thoughts, honestly. <clears throat> yeah. I think I think we do. have enough knowledge to feel like I can weigh in. I mean, there's a financial impact, but what's the right answer? Well, it's, I think there's going, it's, it, you know, it's going to happen. Okay. The question is, how much would we be able to offset by um, savings and full-time salary when there's right. vacancy? And um, we don't know. We don't know. So, you know, it's, it's a bit of a crapshoot. So, you know, if you cut it and we need it, we come back right. and um, ask for it from contingency. Right. Um, so is your recommendation to hold? My recommendation is if we can afford to leave it as it is. Okay. I'll take your recommendation on that. Yeah. Anyone else? Yeah. Sarah, are you good? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So that stays. Okay. Well, I think the only other thing we had was um, we had talked about the funding for the Think Smart Before You Start campaign. Um, and that's a $4,000 number. Um, so I went and spoke before the Senior Men's Association today. and. One of the things they were, they, you know, they were showing a lot of concern about was was traffic in town, speeding, um, not using signals. Please use your signals. Please don't roll through stop signs. Um, so I think that this is a good campaign. I, I'm, um, I think, Mike, we would agree. Maybe there are some things we could do differently with this. But we have some sunk costs in this, and so I, I, I'm um, in favor of continuing it with taking another look at maybe how we could do it a little better. That's fine. Fine with that. How much is this? Four thousand. Four thousand. And I don't think we, I don't think we ever cut it, right? No, no it's in there. It's in right there. Now. So it doesn't change these numbers. Correct. But um, it was something that we had kind of talked about. So. Um, was there a match from somebody? Was the whole that was out of the um, police? Association. Yeah, the original funding was from the police false alarm fund. Okay, and they're not going to do that anymore. The police commission is not going to do that anymore. So last year, some of the cost came from there, and the rest came from police association. from the general fund. Oh, I thought. It was oh, the police association in the initial year, the police right. association donated money right. towards it right. as well. Yeah, Sarah worked on it. Yeah. Was there a reason that they decided not to fund it again this year? The police commission? Yeah. Not. I think just they have other uses for the funds in the false alarm fund. <coughs> but I would anticipate the, the police commission um, would continue to help us on this. Okay. Right? No. 
well, who's running the, the campaign? The indication then? that we had from them was that they were not going to put false alarm fund money towards the same. No, no, no when I you say help, you mean man hours, man, not man. Man. Oh, oh, oh right. running, yes. running the campaign. Yes, okay. yes, yes. yes. I, th I think we can. We'll get some help there. Okay, so uh, leave it in. Yes. In. Okay, so we leave that in. Okay, so that I think that concludes all of the items that we were um, um, <coughs> debating, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that covered? Mm -hmm. That's everything I had on my list. Okay. So where does that put us? So for your total budget, let me just okay, make sure we, everything ties up. Really? You really only have to vote on the um, the totals. Because I don't have any people working for You're going to have you have you should have a one with with blanks. Oh, okay. Great. So with the changes that you made, your board of selectmen budget is up 1.4 million dollars, which is 4.32 percent. The library's up 205 at 4.8 percent. Debt service is up 2.5 million, 24 percent. So your total operations budget is up 4.1 million dollars, which is 8.76 percent. After netting out revenues, we're up. Uh, we need to raise in taxes an increase of 2.4 million, which is 6.16 percent. Um, and then Sarah, you had inquired about the mill rate, so I've added that on here. Mill rate needed to finance operations last year was 4.39. Thank you. For this year, it'd be 4.59. Thank you. And then looking down to capital, um, just on actual expend gross expenditures, um, you're up 335,000, which is 9.8 percent. As Jack was referring to, the revenues into that fund are down. Um, and so you're needing, at the moment, $3.5 million in taxes to cover capital. But we do expect that the Board of Finance will be looking at funding opportunities for capital. So those two together, um, total mill rate to cover operating and capital last year was 4.46. This year, as it stands right now, is 4.99. Um, and then for total taxes, operating in capital, um, an increase of 5.3 million, 13.54%. So, you know, if you look at that, that bottom piece, um, the difference in what we had to pay to fund capital through taxes last year versus what's proposed this year, that's why I want to make the move to having a portion of the mill rate directly deposited into the capital fund because the volatility there in the past impacted the general fund it impacted your increase on the general fund. You're always going to have volatility in the capital fund with your funding sources because the Board of Finance really controls that. Um, but you can stabilize what you're doing in the general fund. Okay. Any and we, um, Jen had done some, um, some math earlier today. Um, the assessor gave us an indication of um, the increase in the grand list that was directly attributable to um, the federal realty project. And that increase alone in taxes more than funds the increased personnel that we need in the fire marshal and the health department. Um, as a result of the, the redevelopments. Well, I'm glad to hear that it's least yeah. funded because okay. they'll be Can spending a lot of time yeah. over there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other thoughts? No? Thank your staff and everyone yeah. for all the hard work. Yeah. Okay, Kate, so what do I do? I just Jen's going to give you numbers. Fill in the blank. And I just put it all your places. Yep. Um, John, did you give me that? Yeah, she's got my card. I know. I bought extras. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> so just make a motion to approve this. Well, you want to, yeah, I read through the whole motion with the numbers. With her, so. So, resolution for fiscal year 2023 2024 budget. Whereas the Board of Selectmen has reviewed and evaluated the Town Administrator's proposed budget for fiscal year 23-2024 and the six-year capital plan, 
and whereas following completion of this review, a number of changes and modifications have been made to the budget. Now, therefore, it be it resolved that the Board of Selectmen hereby approve the modified annual budget for 2023-2024 in the six-year capital plan. Be it further resolved that the 2023-2024 budget and six-year capital plan be submitted to the Board of Finance for their consideration. The general fund, general operating fund, $38,355,721. Debt service, $12,912,679. Transfers out to other funds, zero. Total general fund, $51,268,400. Sewer Operating Fund, $4,409,029. Parking Operation Fund, $838,000. Recreations Programs Fund, $1,400,000. Capital Fund, $3,725,077. Sewer Capital Fund, $224,500. Parking Capital Fund, $327,500. <clears throat> Make a motion. May I have a motion to approve the fiscal year 2023-2024 budget. Sarah moves, Mike seconds. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Seeing nothing else on the agenda, may I have a motion? Okay, so. No, oh. motion to adjourn. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> motion to adjourn. Um, uh, second, Mike seconds. All in favor? Thank you. Thank you, 79.